Yellowstone National Park is filled with wonders. It is the only place on Earth with a unique combination of vast thermal features and an abundance of majestic wildlife. After wolves were reintroduced in 1995, it became the largest, most intact temperate ecosystem in the lower 48 states. Now that the wolves are finally back, all the ecosystem parts are here. Most of us who looked at Yellowstone Lake 30 years ago saw a large, absolutely stunning lake with healthy fish populations. Everything must be fine in a lake that was so beautiful. Today, the beauty of the water belies a disturbing problem because an alien predator species is now in the lake. For thousands and thousands of years, Yellowstone Lake and its tributaries, including the Yellowstone River, was home to the largest population of genetically pure Yellowstone cutthroat trout in the world. The upper and lower Yellowstone Falls kept alien trout species from invading the cutthroat's home. Just watching them move upstream and struggle over waterfalls is a spectacle of beauty, the epitome of western wildness. During that spawning period, they became readily available to an impressive number of wildlife. After the cutthroat's eggs hatch, the fry migrate back towards the lake, and some are taken by aquatic birds. Harlequin ducks feed primarily on insects and other invertebrates, but they will take fish fry and eggs. Ospreys, otters, grizzly bears, and 30 or more other birds and mammal species are dependent upon them. As the long winter ends, these predators need a rich protein source to help them produce the next generation. When Europeans first came to Yellowstone in the 1800s, they found that over 40% of its lakes and rivers were fishless because they were isolated by waterfalls. Fish from hatcheries were brought into Yellowstone in milk cans, and by 1900, many trout species, including brook, rainbow, and lake trout, had been stocked into Yellowstone waters. Sometime in the early 1980s, disaster struck. Some of the lake trout from Lewis Lake were introduced into Yellowstone Lake. Unfortunately, their presence was not discovered until 1994. Because so many animals are dependent on Yellowstone cutthroat trout, it is a keystone species. One of these animals is the playful otter. In Yellowstone, they are particularly dependent on cutthroat trout. They spend much of their time in water catching and eating fish. Grizzly bears and black bears are very hungry in the spring after months of hibernation. In the past, Yellowstone cutthroat trout going upstream to spawn were easily harvested by bears. Today, they must find other source of fat and protein. Both grizzly and black bear mothers living near the lake have an easier time rearing their young when cutthroat trout are on the menu. Although bald eagles eat a wide variety of prey, they seem to prefer fish, and in Yellowstone, that fish is usually the Yellowstone cutthroat trout. Ospreys are one of the few Yellowstone residents that are entirely fish eaters. Around Yellowstone Lake and the Yellowstone River, the only fish available to them are Yellowstone cutthroat trout. The dipper is a small, drab, gray bird with most unusual habits. It lives near clear mountain streams where it literally walks on the stream bottom and catches aquatic insects. In the summer, after the dipper's eggs hatch, it takes the occasional small cutthroat and carries these cutthroat fry to its young. All of these species benefit from Yellowstone cutthroat trout, and lake trout are not a substitute for them because the life cycle of the Yellowstone cutthroat and its predator, the lake trout, are very different. Lake trout spawn in the lake, not in streams where they can be eaten by predators. 
a 25-pound female lake trout can produce 15,000 large eggs. Young lake trout compete with cutthroat for invertebrates, then switch to eating cutthroat exclusively when they are five or six years old. Overall, cutthroat numbers in Yellowstone Lake have decreased by at least 90%, primarily because of lake trout predation. Since the mid-1990s, the Park Service has been working ceaselessly to net the lake trout and have killed over one and a half million of them. The dead lake trout are sent to the bottom so their nutrients remain in the lake. Also, newer techniques are being developed to combat the lake trout in Yellowstone Lake. One recent innovation is the use of acoustic biotelemetry to track the lake trout's movements around the lake and to pinpoint the spawning areas. Only about 4% of the lake is considered prized lake trout spawning habitat, so hitting the adults, eggs, and the embryos there is the key. The U.S. Geological Survey and the National Park Service began a pilot study in which a hydroacoustic tag is inserted in adult lake trout and then released and tracked to their spawning and holding areas. Netting efforts can then be concentrated in those areas. Also, egg suction and electrically killing the embryos with this shocking device on spawning grounds may be future control methods. Uh, for the first time in 2012, we saw a pulse of small Yellowstone cutthroat trout in the lake. These are some of the four to six to eight inch fish that we had not seen in about a decade. And uh, one year doesn't make a trend. So we were really excited in both 2013 and 2014 again to see this pulse of smaller fish in the lake. And what that shows us is that at a minimum we are preserving the capacity for Yellowstone cutthroat trout to reproduce in the lake and to have some level of recruitment. And that is critical. So these signs are, are very, very encouraging. And I feel confident that with uh, a sustained effort, some patience and more time, that we will eventually suppress the lake trout population and allow Yellowstone cutthroat trout to reproduce and recover to a level in which they can uh, regain their prominent keystone species position in the ecosystem. It's our nation's first national park. If we can't preserve the ecosystem in that park, and if we can't preserve the signature fish, in that national park, where can we? I, I think the one thing that I have said several times now and, and, and I feel very strongly about is that many people have viewed the issue of the introduction of lake trout into Yellowstone uh, Lake and, um, as, a, as a fishery issue. And for years, the, the fishery crews have worked um, unceasingly to uh, reduce the, the increasing population of lake trout in, in Yellowstone Lake. Um, it's been only in the last four or five years, I think, that more people in Yellowstone National Park have really begun to see the importance of this um, the lake trout introduction and the effects that it has had on the Yellowstone Lake ecosystem. And it has been raised now to a, a park issue. So we've moved from lake trout being a fishery issue to a, to a park service issue in Yellowstone National Park. I think that we will be successful when it becomes a national issue because I think it is a national issue.